Okay, cat is physical features. Canada is surrounded by three oceans. And when you write and you're making your political maps and physical maps, your larger bodies is indicated by capital letters all the way, all caps. Now, as I was saying, we have three oceans. We got Pacific Ocean on the west coast. You got your Arctic Ocean in the north. And on the east, you have your Atlantic Ocean. Understand? All three of those oceans should be written in all capital letters. And, of course, in blue. It's water. Correct? Okay. That takes care of the three big bodies of water. Let's go back and talk about the physical features of Canada, such as I've been indicated down here in my key. Okay? And yes, you guys will all have to have a key properly labeled. Understand? Okay. We would worry about the star with a circle, a star and a dot for a physical map? No. That's political indicators. All right. Physical features. On the West Coast, we'll start there. Canada has the Canadian Cordialis which Cordillera is a chain of mountains. They have three different mountain ranges. We got the McKinsey Mountains, which is on the boundary of Yukon Territory to Northwest Territory, McKinsey Mountain. Your McKinsey Mountains run from the Arctic Ocean and down and hit to the Rocky Mountains. That's where it combines to the largest mountain chain called the Rocky Mountains. Our Rocky Mountains also connect us to Canada because we in Twin Falls live within the Rocky Mountain Range. Okay. Continuing on, final mountain range of Cana the Canadian Cordillera over here is the Coast Mountains. Log I logically placed along the coast. Okay, so that's your coast mountain range. Going further inward. Okay, moving further interior, next to the Canadian Cordillas is what's called the interior plains. Yes, the interior plains bleed into our great plains. Okay, careful my thing, don't bump it. Okay. Have you taken your quiz? Not yet. Okay, go ahead and find a spot. You can even sit on the floor, take your quiz. Okay? Great Plains bleeds into them. We call them the Great Plains here in the United States. They refer to them as interior plains. My image stops here, but officially it runs all the way to the Arctic Ocean. Okay? And the interior plains became flat and full of great resources thanks to the Ice Age as it pulled from the Canadian Shield, which of course is a horseshoe-shaped region around the Hudson Bay, okay? Your Canadian Shield is a horseshoe-shaped region around the Canadian Shield. That was formed during the Ice Age as receding glaciers over time. What, two or three? They dug crevices and built up the topsoil from here, pulled it back to this area where it became flattened. So my interior plains was great for farming today because of the flat lands and the resources, riches from over here. Okay, your Canadian Shield is the largest shield physical region of Canada. Circles around the Hudson Bay like a horseshoe. Now, next up is we're going to label the Laurentian Highlands. Now, I can never say the word right because it's a French word. However, this area, the highlands in this area, help offset and break apart the Appalachian Highlands area, region, and the Great Lakes, St. Lawrence Lowlands region. You remember from the Kahoot game as we found
on those images to recognize where they're from. That's what you see it from. Physically, on this map, this is all we're going to label as physical features. Now let's go to the water again. Okay, we should already have Canada surrounded by three oceans. Pacific, Arctic, and Atlantic. Now, let's go into the rivers and waterways and lakes. Okay, Bay of Fundy. For those of you guys who actually watched the Prezi over the regions, you know about the Bay of Fundy and its 50-foot tides. If you haven't watched that Prezi, I highly recommend it. It's such a cool-looking place, I really want to travel there. The Bay of Fundy is one of those places. Okay, that's just a cool fact. Now, the important things, the Gulf of St. Lawrence, right here. That's where the St. Lawrence River flows out to the Atlantic Ocean from the Great Lakes. Right now, all you write down on your paper is Lake S, or L-S, L-H, L-M, L-E, L-O, so you can finish it later, that's fine. But of course, you got Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario. Okay? By the way, some of those lakes do connect to the Native Americans that found that place to be their home. The Hurons, Ontario, you know, those kind of things. All right. Going south, northward, most of you guys probably heard about the Hudson Bay, correct? At least one time in your life? Henry Hudson, Hudson Bay. Okay, you didn't know where it's at? It is, of course, right here. It's quite a big bay. It might not look humongous, but it really is here. Okay, the Hudson Bay and was is easy to find on any map. However, James Bay is not as easy to find. Correct? Make sense? Okay. So those are two bays that we're going to look at in Canada. And I already told you how the Labrador Sea is formed off the coast of Labrador. Right? Okay. Going northward. We got Baffin Bay, which is off of the island, Baffin Island right here. And of course you got Davis Strait. So far, so good? Yes? Awesome. Yes, I'll zoom it out just a bit. We're going to go towards the west coast now. Still looking in the north. To see that the Mackenzie River, because Canada has two main rivers. St. Lawrence River on the east, Mackenzie River here in the north. Canada actually is filled with rivers. Tons of fresh waters. However, main rivers, there's just two. So the Mackenzie River flows from the Bayport Sea, aka Arctic Ocean, because you know it kind of blends together. So it goes from here, goes into some lakes, such as Great Bear Lake. Go further down, Great Slave Lake. Further down, Lake Athabasca. I truly don't think that I'm saying it right, but it's just kind of fun to say it that way. Athabasca. You gotta have that twang to it too, right? Now, ironically, I do know that in Unit 4, you're going to learn about the Native American tribes and how one tribe was here, who called them the bears, great bears. Here, slaves. Okay? And that's not the same type of slave that we know as, right? Okay. See me not? I've, oh, Lake Winnipeg, located in Manitoba, is on this map as well. Now, as I kind of indicated, you guys, there. if I were to actually pull up the water map of Canada, which is kind of a cool thing to look at, there's a water map that will show just the water. It basically all looks blue because there's that much fresh water. We just talked about in this information here and found some of the major features of Canada's
physical mountain. Please remember to always have the compass, and for Canada, the compass has to point to north, not point straight up on your map. And of course, also make sure you have what you have a key indicator for your physical features of Canada. Thank you.